Oh, hello everybody. Welcome back. My name is Josh Herman. Welcome to Archetype. This is our third episode of The Caregiver. Uh, doing some 3D modeling and character design stuff today. Uh, first, before I get started, hello, and let me know if I'm too loud, too quiet, or if the music is too loud, too quiet. Uh, if everything's good, we'll keep going. But uh, anyways, I wanted to say welcome. We're going to be working on our character today, uh, the second character in our series. And uh, I've got another little recap video for everybody here to kind of see what I've done over the past stream and then off stream a little bit. And uh, we'll play that in just a minute, but just first off, letting people get into the stream and uh, just generally hello to everybody. Hope you're all doing really well. I see a couple people in the YouTube chat already, Facebook chat as well. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Um, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Josh Herman, and uh, I'm an artist, character designer, concept artist, uh, creative director, art director, a bunch of different things. Uh, I'll show you my art station very quickly so you can get an idea of what we'll be working on. Put that up here. Switch to this layout. And uh, worked on a bunch of different things, uh, a bunch of Marvel movies. Um, not worked at Naughty Dog on Uncharted, worked on Star Citizen, uh, and then recently I've been creating a new series. I recently did the Unreal Fellowship, and then uh, where I created a short film. You can check that out here. I'll probably play that at our break. And then we have uh, Archetype, which is this series. So this is the first of 12. Uh, characters that I made and today we'll be working on our second one so that's kind of what we're going through and today um, I guess I'll show you that as well I forgot to open my Trello board Trello is how I've been organizing my uh, thoughts and also just generally like my creative process and we'll so that we'll put that over here you can see this is what that board looks like um, and this is the character that we already completed, which was the caregiver. I should probably put my actual image in here, even though it's behind here. I should probably put it in there. Uh, and now we're working on our caregiver. So I've done the last week I did uh, some more modeling and sculpting. And we're kind of going to be doing a couple of these all at the same time today. I still need to finish up the model uh, a little bit so I have some room to go. Um, but yeah, for, let me play this recap video for everybody it's about eight minutes long and just heads up the audio at the beginning is a little hot so it's going to come in a little hot but it does settle down uh but this will get you up to speed on what what i'm working on what I, and where i'm where i'm at so i'll see you guys all in a couple minutes we'll play this real quick hey everybody welcome back uh this is a quick recap of the last stream and work i did off stream so what you see me doing right here is kind of finalizing the overall large shapes of the caregiver uh, which is my golem i was really liking the large round strong shapes uh and wanted to kind of play a little bit around with the color and what the flow of that could be so you see me playing around here with some kind of tannish colors and then uh, finding ways to move the eye from top to bottom and then adding in a lighter color there uh, i think i want to play around with using some darker colors as like cavities in the model uh, since the characters can be huge it would kind of make sense for it to be something that would have some crevices or some areas or cracks or plates or just gaps in there so that's kind of what i'm playing around with now and that's really just exploring color uh, i like to do this relatively early in a design phase because i think it's really important to know what it's going to be rather than having a final model that you then decide to go ahead and color at the end uh, i've always found that process really hard because sometimes you don't really know and you're just basically mixing and matching and hoping you find something interesting and you don't really always design the character with the color or the flow in mind when you're doing it that way it seemed or it's always been to me if i do it that way that i sort of am surprised that's what the end result is sometimes i'm surprised in a good way and sometimes i'm surprised in a bad way Right now what I'm doing is I'm taking a screenshot. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it in Photoshop. I often do this when I'm feeling a little stuck. And so I was happy with the overall color and the design, but it felt like something was missing. And so I'm just using this chalky brush here. And I'm just kind of very lightly painting on the outsides of the model to explore a bit of a different silhouette. Because the character is going to be so large, I like what I have, but it isn't necessarily showing off scale. And so what I'm doing now is playing around some alphas to get some of the silhouette that I was just quickly experimenting with in Photoshop. Photoshop is obviously way faster to play around with this, so I recommend going into Photoshop or any 2D software to kind of see what you can do in a much faster, easier to use way. 
What I ended up finding was this sort of leathery texture, and this is going to be a nice base for me. Uh, I'm just kind of layering this over the whole character here. And it's not necessarily intended to be the final texture. In fact, it won't be at all. But it gives me a nice starting point to break away from what it was becoming, which was um, almost more decorative than it was necessarily anything that had a design of a uh, function in it. So, uh, Or showing the, the scale and the size of the character. Uh, while I was adding those textures, I noticed that the model itself was not going to be, uh, it was not going to be able to hold the geometry that I wanted in that detail. So what I'm doing now is I'm breaking each one of those models off into their own individual model. Uh, I'm taking that, I am then Z remeshing it, which is what you see me doing right here, to get a nicer flow of topology. At that point, I'm also going to unwrap it. So you see me unwrapping very quickly, and then I'm going to project the original color and the original detail of the sculpt into the model. This is going to allow me to have probably double to quadruple the amount of detail in each section. So the hands, the arms, the body, each one of those will be able to have uh, a lot more information in them than they would before. So now you see me doing the same process for the arms. I'm doing one arm at a time and then I'm going to mirror that over and that's what you see right there. And then I'm going to do the body and do the exact same process. It's very simple. Once, basically, once you get a final model or a model where you feel like you can break it apart and you don't need to have it as one big mesh, you mask the pieces, separate them, isolate them, and then work on them one at a time. So I go and duplicate, make those Z remesh, unwrap it, and you're pretty much done after your projection. Now that I have those as three different meshes, you can see that I can now subdivide these. And I, now I can basically push the level of detail one level further, and I can either add a tertiary level of detail, or I can add alphas or stamps, or just generally push the sculpt a little bit further, rather than it feeling like it's a little pixelated. And that happens in ZBrush. Sometimes when uh, you use a DynaMesh or you use a base mesh that just wasn't really built for the size or shape of what you're making. But now I can come in and I can isolate all these little details and really punch it up a little bit further. While I'm doing this, I am thinking about design the whole time, function the whole time, and how I want each one of these pieces to feel. I want them to feel bigger, I want them to feel stronger, I want them to feel more substantial. And I was worried that if some of these chunks, especially these big arm pauldrons, uh, if they got too thin, that it would feel kind of weak. So I'm going back and reinforcing my initial lines. And here was something I found that was interesting. I went into the model and I went into surface and I just started playing with some of these settings that was in the light box there. You see me popping that open. And now I'm adjusting the scale and the size. And what this is doing is it's adding a whole nother layer of complexity to the model, which I didn't expect. I was actually looking for some more granite or rock type textures, but you, it added a whole nother level of flow and interest to the character that I found really interesting and compelling uh, and now I've, I basically want to push up the whole model of, uh, a little bit further. Now with that I've got this new level of detail you see all those uh, sort of uh, I guess I'll call them lines or rings uh, that are encircling, encircling the model but I don't want that to be the final detail so I'm going in here uh, and experimenting with some meshes uh, detail meshes or carving meshes and I'm just adding a little bit more on top of what that already gave me. Now this part here, the head, has a lot of rings on it, and so in a little bit you're going to see me go through, and I actually store a morph target. I'm going to store the morph target, and then I'm going to come back into it, and I'm going to erase each and every one of these lines. This process, this is sped up about um, nearly 20 times, so uh, this process is, it takes a while, uh, and there's not really a good way for me to go around this. I thought of other ways to, to do this. I experimented with the noise, and I couldn't get something good, so what I ended up doing was... Uh, creating a layer which you can see on the right uh, when I applied the rings to the model I baked that into the layer then I could turn off the layer store a morph target and then I could come back and uh, turn the rings back on and use the morph target as a way to essentially erase some of the rings but because there were so many and it's not symmetrical I did go have to go by hand I want to show this in the video because I think it's important for people to see that sometimes things just take a little bit of time. Uh, and I honestly find this process to be very soothing uh, and very relaxing. So I'll often put on some music, put on a movie, put on something in the background. And sometimes you have to spend 30 minutes to an hour just doing a process that takes a little bit of time, but it gets you the result that you want. And now you're going to see me coming back in with a little bit more color. 
I'm not going to go crazy with the color here right now. I'm really just trying to find a way to integrate kind of the pieces of the chest, the head, and the arms into something that feels more natural. So right now you start to see me kind of experimenting with what that connection between those pieces could be. I find something that I'm kind of happy with. Uh, but now I'm going to go in, and because I had that initial uh, mask by cavity color in there, it's actually fighting some of the design and the look that I have in there. So I'm probably going to have to erase a lot of that. And what you see is me actually just painting on top of it with the original base color uh, to push it along a little bit further like that. And it's, a, it's more or less going to erase it. And you can see me bouncing back and forth between the other model where I know uh, kind of what that's going to look like. And here I'm just adding a little bit more details. I found this little hole interesting, but I thought that that just looking like a ring was weird. So maybe if it was like a little volcano shaft, that looked weird. And I'm just basically going to add some detail around it and integrate it into the sculpt. At this point, I'm getting pretty close to being happy with this. I do want to punch up the detail a little bit, especially in the hands and especially in the feet. But I'm pretty happy with where we are with the model, and I'm looking forward to pushing it on to the next step. Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so here we are. This is where I am with the model. I was just, uh, while that video was playing, working on the hands and getting some gesture in the fingers. Uh, but you can see I'll zoom in on this piece up here this is what it's looking like so we have a pretty high level of detail uh, still you know some areas to finish still some things to work on uh, but generally getting to a pretty cool place with it happy with the overall look the overall design and um, yeah still room to go now obviously when it comes to the illustration side what we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be how am I going to render this is probably the next question right uh, so we'll be talking about that a little bit today, but I kind of still need to finish the model um, before I can do that. My thought is to do some sort of a landscape. Uh, in the previous character, I ended up using a uh, Marmoset tool bag, which is really great. I actually really liked using Marmoset, but I don't know if Marmoset is going to be the best choice for doing a character that's going to be this scale, meaning this little thing down here is expected to be or intended to be the size of a human so as you can tell they're quite uh, large in in comparison uh, there's even another little one down here and what i'm thinking is that it'll probably have to use uh, something like a maya or a blender which i don't know or unreal so i'm probably thinking that i'll be rendering this character in unreal uh, and that means i'm going to have to make a environment for it now i don't have that set up today and that's not the plan that will probably ne be next week's stream uh, me getting into unreal so today what i'm going to be doing is basically trying to finalize everything we have here uh, get it as far along as i can and get it so that next week i can jump into unreal and start creating a um, scene around it so what does that mean well today if we go back to our uh, trello board i basically am going to be working on a couple things today uh, the first thing is I'm going to be working on a little bit of the composition. I can't do the final composition, obviously, because I don't know what the environment and the set and the, the lighting and all that will be. But I can start thinking about what I want my image to be. Do I want it to be posed? What will the pose be? What will it be interacting with? Will it be interacting with anything? Uh, so I'm going to basically, my goal for today is to finish the model, get it posed, figure out what that's going to be figure out maybe a little bit more texture stuff and then be ready to go into Unreal for the next stream. So that's it. Uh, I saw a bunch of questions come in. I wanted to ch answer those very quickly. Uh, somebody was saying, uh, so I guess most of the artists use Substance for texturing. Substance is pretty popular, uh, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, uh, but a lot of people still use uh, you know, Photoshop. Um, I've, even Marmoset Toolbag has had more stuff in it recently. Um, so that's one that I'm seeing. Um, Mari is obviously a huge piece of uh, software for texturing. So it kind of varies depending on what the needs are. But uh, Substance is definitely a big, a big, big player in the game. Uh, there was also a question from Twitch about, can I talk about the Unreal Fellowship program and how it went? I also really like my work. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that fellowship was a five week long uh, sort of like a boot camp where you basically learn uh, Unreal. Uh, you learn virtual some virtual production techniques. You learn uh, everything from Live Link to you know how to integrate um, mocap, 
shot creation, environment creation, world creation. Um, you know, it's a lot more about creating a short film, right, than it is necessarily about techniques. So it was, you know, creating a, a short and everything you would need to do that, uh, in incorporating effects and particles and cameras and just a little bit of, of everything, really. Uh, so kind of, it was pretty fun. Yeah, I did that back, I think it was in August of last year. Uh, but it was definitely, you know, a full-time commitment thing, like to produce a film uh, that's two, roughly two minutes long um, while learning the software is not, it's not easy. And so it was something I was able to do as part of uh, my day, but it was really great. It was a really excellent experience and I'm very happy I was able to do it. And it was kind of interesting because Unreal uh, was, is not really something I was ex I, I knew I would wanted to play with it but it wasn't something I really expected to get into and I after I you know kind of got into it I, I felt pretty free meaning like uh, the, oh, there's a lot of the tools it's, it's definitely a little different than working in an Amaya or something like that but um, I felt like it I was kind of free to actually be able to create to be able to make something and it was powerful enough and easy enough to learn that I could, and over the course of five weeks, make a short film, which, um, you know, I, I never, even though I have a generalist skill set, um, I didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think I'd be able to make that. So, pretty interesting. But I had a, I had a good time doing it. I'm going to figure out this arm. Right now the arm is still very humanoid, and that's fine. I do want it to be humanoid. As you can see, it has, you know, the classic four fingers and a thumb. But I want to find a way to integrate the rhythm of this and how, if at all, the hands can bend. It needs to have some thought behind that. So that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out now. I also need to do the same exact thing to the legs, which right now are kind of just these really large stumps. So I kind of need to find a way to basically... I'll just draw it out simply here, but basically block out, you know, how this were to bend, if it were to bend, and if these big stumps do anything, what they do, and what they look like, so that I can uh, just make it all look a little bit better. How am I feeling about ZBrush joining Max on? I feel like that question's not going to escape me for a while. Uh, I feel good. I'm curious to see what it'll be like moving forward. So at this point, I think we're all just kind of waiting to see what the next versions really look like. Uh, obviously, they've removed uh, perpetual free upgrades, which is expected. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. I think that's, for me, I got, I personally got about 12 years of free software. I think I can afford to pay for it after 12 years, so I don't particularly feel uh, too bad about it. And the license that I have, which I have a personal license, um, it still will work forever. So it's not like, you know, and now I, I kind of feel like I only really need to upgrade if they give me something or produce, make something that's worth upgrading for. I think they probably will, but at least I have the option. It's not like they've completely, you know, stopped it from working, which is great. Going up a couple of levels here. Blender is awesome. That's what I hear. I'm definitely curious to learn Blender. It's something I've been wanting to do as well. That one and Unreal were the two that I haven't really played with. That one who and also Houdini. I don't really have plans to learn Houdini, but uh, it seems to be incredibly powerful. So I'm curious about that one as well. I'm just going to 
make these a little bit more chunky. I was using the inflate brush and it kind of made them very round. And this thumb is looking weird. How's everybody out there doing? Everybody working on any interesting, cool pieces? Our no man's term started yesterday, so I've been first class, which is exciting. Always nice to be back teaching. Corporate structure for Blender seems revolutionary, in your opinion. I mean, part of that is it's a nonprofit. I'm wondering how I'm going to do these fingers. It's also going to depend on what the pose is. I've got enough of the fingers now that I think I can probably figure out what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to work on the legs now. I probably need to separate them. Now what you'll notice is this might actually be cause some problems for me uh, because when I do this, I'm going to get this, which is a problem. So if I wanted to do a pose, you know, where their legs are, are separated, uh, I'm going to run into some trouble. So how do I fix that? Well, I can just not have symmetry on as the first way to do it, or should be. But now I'm worried that I cemented it together. And I did. Oh no, I didn't know that I had Dynamesh that together. Look what happened. All right. So at some point I Dynameshed it a long time ago. I didn't think that it was like that. So now we're going to have to redo this piece here, or at least we're going to have to recreate that piece. Uh, yeah, they're sort of like a, a earth golem, basically. So uh, a little bit of rock, a little bit of mud, a little bit of grass, a little bit of just other shapes. All right, let's find a way to do this. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to duplicate this object. I'm going to solo mode, so I'm only working on it. Since I know that it's going to break these legs regardless of what I do, I'm just going to stretch it like this. And then I'm going to smooth probably just this middle part. I'm going to go up some subdivision levels. It's going to look really bad for a while, so we're going to have to try to figure out how we can clean this. But we do have to we have to do this, so. Um, I'm probably going to go in here. I'm going to end up Z remeshing this whole piece again because I, I have to get new geometry for it. So I'm going to go to my geometry. I'm going to delete my lower subdivision levels. First, I'm going to du duplicate it so I have one. Uh, delete my lower subdivs. Oh, it says there's a layer. Okay, so I need to bake my layer. Delete lower subdivs, that's great. Uh, now we can do a couple different things. First thing we could probably do is just, just generally delete the piece, the, the geometry that's there. So I'll come in here. That should create like a nice mask all the way through there. Uh, I'm gonna do hide that, invert that. And now you'll see that this is basically the geometry that I'm going to kind of want. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll delete hidden. I have created this hotkey uh, in one of the previous streams. So I'm deleting hidden, meaning all those polygons in the middle are gone. And now what, what I'm gonna do is probably, I'm just gonna keep duplicating this until I feel like I'm in a safe space. Um, I'm gonna Z, re uh, not Z remesh, I'm gonna uh, Dynamesh this object, I think. I don't really want it to Dynamesh up here like at all but uh we're gonna try it Let's see what a low res dynamesh does first it's 
saying it's going to close all these holes. That should be fixing the problem. Uh, it's going to take a minute because this is a 8 million polygon mesh. I did do it at a very low resolution, though. I probably could have removed um, that many subdivisions. And as you can see, this is beautiful. <laughs> right, what I'm going to do really quick, let's try this just to make this run a little bit faster. Z plugin, let's see how quickly we can decimate this. Just working on a decimated file will make it work a lot faster because it's not having as many um, polygons basically to compute the action. But it might take too long to do the 8 million, so we might have to go back a couple steps. Yeah, I'm going to try to. I aborted that. Let's uh, go back. All right, what did I have up here? All right, this is the one I want still. Okay. Just going to delete these ones that I was working on. Just the polygon size is too much. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to go lower subdivision level, delete higher. Oh, I have to bake all my layers again. Bake. Great. Go down a subdivision level. Delete lower, delete higher. Now this is 2 million poly, so it's not as high. I'll project the detail on later from the one that I had duplicated. Okay. And now we'll come back in and we'll do that Dynamesh. I do not want it to autosave. Uh, we'll try this at this point. It's always fun when you are trying to work on something and all of a sudden you see like, oh, there's a huge problem here. I don't want this piece. So polygrouping this, polygrouping this. I'm going to just smooth this out a little bit. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hide that and I'm going to delete hidden. So now I have a mesh, a very low base mesh, which can kind of fix the problems that I was having. So now you can see it's in the correct pose. I still have the other one here that I'm going to project from. This has 8 million polys. But first what I'm going to do is get this one to be a little bit more set up. So let's also just kind of correct this part. Uh, this is somewhat common if you're sculpting, especially for concept sculpting. You know, sometimes you'll uh, just be trying to you know make something fast that looks interesting. And when you're doing that, you're not always making the cleanest models. Uh, or you do an accident like I did here where I welded the legs together but didn't realize they were. Sometimes you got to go back and clean all that stuff up. All right. So now I've got this. Um, I can probably try to Z-remesh this and see what this looks like. I don't know if I need to, but you'll see that the difference between this and this. There's some grossness up at the top of... the seam here, which I'm sure I'll have to sculpt again. Oh yeah, that actually created a really nasty one, huh? These kind of floating pieces here are not what I want. Let's try. If you go to poly groups and you go to auto groups, Looks like it is all one piece of mesh, which is a bit of a problem. Let's go back, 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 back. This is not what I was hoping to work on on stream today, but it is sometimes what you got to do. I have to inflate this so that it gets a little better. using some paper sketching before I jump into ZBrush. Uh, I did a little bit of Photoshop sketching before I jumped into ZBrush. Uh, if you go back and rewatch the first stream, second stream of this, or the first stream, 
uh, there you'll see they're all on YouTube um, in the playlist under archetype you'll be able to find kind of the question to what you're asking I'm just gonna fill this this weird hole here is gonna cause me a lot of issues so let's just fill that up let's dynamesh that even though there'll be some extra polygons in here I'm debating if it's worth fighting it the whole time and I don't think it is so now I'm gonna come in here and just to Z remesh this it's gonna give it a much cleaner topology which is great I'm gonna come in here before I move forward I'm going to uh, unwrap this UV master unwrap it's all one island, so it shouldn't take too long. You can see if I flatten it, this is what those UVs look like, which is pretty decent. So now it has nice UVs, well, pretty nice UVs, better topology. The legs are separated, and now I need to project the detail onto it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate these two pieces. This is the piece that had the, the legs welded together. Obviously, that's a problem. And this is the piece that we just made that has nicer topology. So I'm probably going to have to do a lot of resculpting on this anyways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some subdivision levels so that it closely matches the number of polygons here. That way it can capture that much detail. So what are we going to do? We're going to add subdivisions till we get close to 8 million. This is going to be 9 million, almost 10. So I'm going to go down to 2.5. Let's go down even one further. Show the thing that I want. And I'm going to uh, project, project, project all. This shouldn't take too long. Shouldn't take too long, but we'll see. Here we go. What you'll see is it now has projected that detail. It's not going to be perfect, so there is going to be some things that I need to do. First thing I'm noticing is it's not capturing the whole detail. Now I did move the mesh around a little bit and that's probably why this is happening. But what you can do is you can adjust this distance slider right here. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go down a subdivision level more or and I'm going to turn the distance all the way up. That's basically going to force it to hit something. So project all. It does sometimes when you crank this all the way up shoot little polygons into the ether. Right, it's, you see it's also causing issues here. Now it is forcing it to go back. I don't necessarily want that. See, now that projection distance doesn't go far enough, but it is wanting to capture that whole area. But I, I'm going to re have to resculpt that whole leg anyways, so we're just going to run with this. I'm going to go up a subdivision level, and then I'm going to project again. You see it's trying trying to meet itself in the middle. We're going to smooth that out so that doesn't happen. Go up another subdivision level and I'm basically working my way up uh, till, till I get to the amount of polygons of which I uh, had. So I'm at 600,000. And every time I'm going to come in here and just very quickly push that back. And I'll probably should do this with some of these other areas in here as well. All right, we'll add one a little more subdivision level. We're going to do this two more times. So right now we're at two and a half million project. And we're going to do it uh, at the 10 million mark as well. Got a question from YouTube. Uh, is it okay to stick with ZBrush for any type of modeling or sculpting? Uh, yeah, it's definitely the best sculpting software out there and it can do pretty much anything from a modeling standpoint um, there's in the past couple of years there's been some really great innovations but it ZBrush is not an animation program or anything like that. So if you're hoping to do that type of work, you will need another piece of software. All right, let's add one more subdivision level. And before I go too far, I'm going to save. 
just to make sure that I don't lose any of this because this was an annoying step. I have a lot of work to do in here, as you can see. All right, so at our last subdivision level, this will make this 10 million polygons, which means it should be able to capture all of the detail. And then we'll go to project. At this point, I'm also gonna turn on the color from the underlying model. This is what it looks like with the color. And now I'm going to project that onto this. Saying, do you want to project your poly paint? Yes, please. What are your main three tools you use the most for modeling and sculpting? Good question. Looks like this process might take a little bit. Uh, and it looks like I'm last of the computer working so hard to do this. So I'll answer the question as soon as it's over. Um, just because I don't know how the sound is looking and all that. But um, somebody is also asking, you like ZBrush? Give some godlike outputs. It's a great one. Yeah, it's a great piece of software. Uh, the main tools, I guess I'll, I'll answer now. The main tools I use are uh, my move tool. Probably the clay buildup brush and then the damn standard brush. It's true, not a lot of mesh not a lot of software can handle meshes like this. Not even close. Oof, that did something weird. That did something really weird, didn't it? Okay, we're gonna undo that. That was, that was unfortunate. All right, we're going to do this one last time. We're not going to have our color on this time, and we'll do one more project. We can try to project just the color, and uh, if something doesn't work, I'll also show how you can just project individual parts of a model using the Z Project brush. This is a pretty high polygon count, so it's going to take a little while to finish this last projection. And sometimes this is just the process. It's really interesting. You know, a lot of people are always asking about how long it takes to make something. Um, there's not a lot you can do sometimes to speed up this. There we go. So it's done. I'll isolate that. You see what it's trying to do again. We're going to have to correct all this. But after this, we'll get into some posing. And that'll be a lot more fun. Since the legs are not symmetrical anyways, I might do a quick block out of trying to make them, you know, different. This is needing a little extra help, so I'm going to go into my brush settings, my smooth settings, and there's a smooth, stronger brush. This brush is wicked strong. Like, it will immediately move 
uh, geometry and details, but it will also obliterate all details. So, uh, you know, if you have corrections and stuff that you want to use like this, you can see how fast it is to, to go. I'm going up each subdivision level and correcting it. I'm going to do that here as well. So we're at the top. Now I'm going to do the same thing here where you see all these polygons kind of cross themselves. So I'll smooth it, go up a subdivision level, smooth, smooth. Just try to quickly, as fast as possible, fix all this stuff. You have a question as you're seeing my workflow it's great but how important is topology anyways does it matter if we have a good artist object uh, it matters more if you depending on what you want to do with it you know I've seen people make incredible things out of cubes and spheres and never change the topology uh, so does it matter in the long run of you know making sure you know as far as actually making an object honestly no it doesn't I'm going to delete uh, this one. I'll turn them all on. So I've got a little areas here in the neck that I need to clean up. You see also some of those projections were causing some polygons. And this is from the uh, Dynamesh. But just a quick hit with the smooth tool and usually it's fine just push this back into the mesh push this back into the mesh use my move brush to kind of readjust some of these shapes uh, the only time that topology really is going to matter is if you want to go a little bit further with it meaning you're getting outside of zbrush uh, so maybe you want to bring it into maya you want to bring it into blender you want to bring it into something different you want to rig it you want to animate it that is when uh you know topology really is going to come into play or if you want to start doing more interesting textural things procedural things all that fun stuff that's when it's really going to turn into something different gary cleaver been watching since episode one not staying but just saying hi as you're going back to episode one awesome well nice to Nice to see you, Gary. Uh, feel free to come back anytime this is live and ask questions if you got them. Right, I'm going to just add some little design lines on this hand. I'm not going to go crazy. Just something so it doesn't feel as empty as the previous one. And then we'll do a quick pass on the inside of these legs. These can probably be symmetrical. It's pretty uncommon to be able to see the, re you know, some, uh, when it comes to symmetry, uh, I try to put it, use symmetry as often as possible, unless it's in a place where it's going to be hard to see it. Uh, it's pretty hard to see the inside of both legs at the same time, unless you're in like very specific poses or angles. Uh, so right now, for example, I'm using symmetry, but you can't really tell. That's probably how this is going to continue to be. Okay, that's going to be fine. And let's figure out what we can do for these legs. Uh, let's go down some subdivision levels. Oh, you know what we need to do? Nobody reminded me. We need to save. Let's save real quick now that we did all that work. Uh, yeah, working in a team means you have to follow some standards is what uh, somebody from YouTube is saying, and I agree with that. You know, if you're on a team and you're going to move something down a pipeline, you're going to start giving it to other people. Having good topology is a, a good habit to do. And in many cases, is probably required. You know, if you're moving it down a line, you're probably likely um, doing some form of animation. And at that point, you will need it to be probably rigged so you're kind of forced to at that point
Have I heard that Xbox bought Activision? What? Like, I, is that like fresh? Is that a brand new one? Is that real? Four hours ago. Wow. Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard for $68 billion. Wow. I mean, I guess Xbox was, was really needing their exclusives like really needing their exclusives so uh that is uh and it's shocking obviously back to vision blizzard is massive but that's crazy for that much money it's just insane thanks for the heads up Will this save WoW? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're going to put it on an Xbox? I mean, PlayStation's having so many troubles just getting their, their new console out. I saw that they were having to boost uh, PlayStation 4 sales or, or production because, you know, just they can't get chips or, or cards to, to produce it. So maybe this is a really smart move by Xbox to, or Microsoft, I guess to um, get some exclusives to like try to try make some ground on them. But I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, obviously. Like they're not going to all of a sudden have new exclusives next month. I don't like the back of these legs very much. All right, let's come up with a shape for these feet. Right now they feel like poorly made elephant feet <laughs> i kind of want to do something that's got like a big i don't know shape to it this is probably where i should turn off symmetry though i don't have a problem i'm basically going to sculpt these probably to be almost like a statue So if I need to uh, sculpt two feet, I'll sculpt two feet. But that's probably close enough for me right now to get us moving. All right, y'all. Does anybody have any ideas about what this pose could be? If you got any suggestions, I'm happy to hear them. I just kind of think it should just almost be like a walk-in pose. The gentle giant kind of a pose. I mean, it's, it's, can we say it's done for Sony? I don't know. That's a good question. It's a really good question. But if you want those exclusives, I mean, I don't know if that's what they'll do with it. I, I think I would imagine they would. It's a way to do it. Just buy a whole company that makes some of the most popular games on the planet. I mean, Microsoft used to own tons and tons and tons of studios. They all kind of escaped their grasp. Studios like Bungie... where they used to produce a lot of their own games. I can't remember what was the studio that made Fables. So it wasn't that a Microsoft exclusive. Sony's been doing that for a long time, though. Naughty Dog, Sony Santa Monica, now Santa Monica Studios. If he daintly held one of his hand fingers to an orb, <laughs> standing from a knee, I 
All right, let's figure out how we can do some poses. Let's play around with a couple poses, and I think that'll be a fun way to kind of go for the rest of the stream. I'm going to save, and what we're going to do is play around with Transpose Master. I actually really like doing this. I've done this with a lot of my projects, where now that I have topology that is a bit lower resolution, I mean, this is a very poseable resolution, but it also represents the character pretty well, and this head should have that as well. 29,000 for the head, 37 for the arms, and only 10 for the body. Um, we're going to use Transpose Master. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to lower everything to its lowest level. You can also hit this all low button, which will do the same thing. Maybe he's like, maybe he holds these orbs or something. I don't know. You're suffering with Dynamesh because it's always missing the resolution. How do you manage to reserve the details after Dynamesh? Uh, on, in the Dynamesh settings, uh, first off, check that you have Project on. Uh, that's a pretty important thing. Uh, if you do not have Project, it will not try to capture the detail. Uh, second, you need to crank up the resolution if it just looks faceted and, and not good. So check that out as well. That should hopefully help you should good question though all right let's do dynamesh not dynamesh what am i saying it's, uh transpose master now transpose master sometimes screws up royally so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to transpose master and we're going to do a test I'm just going to hit T-Pose Mesh. It's going to bring it all to this one thing. What it's actually doing is it clones everything. And you can see it over here. It puts it in its own thing. Uh, meaning this is the original subtool, uh, Z-Tool we were working on. And this is the one that we're currently working on. It turns it all into a single mesh that we can mess, mess around with. All right, so I'm going to do one quick test, which is basically let's just take one of these arms and... Uh, rotate it. You're also going to see how much work we'll have to do to make this work. Okay, we've moved an arm, and then we're going to go back to the mesh. What I'm doing here is sometimes you'll get these weird errors where things happen. But now you'll see that it has basically retaken each one of the... Oh, God. It's taken each one of the subtools. It has recalculated them, and now it reprojects all the detail onto it. So I can now feel confident that I can go back in and pose it. I'm just going to undo till it's back here. Go back down, turn off my color, and do T-Pose Mesh one more time. All right, now we can play around some poses. Uh, I like storing these as separate files sometimes and just exploring different ideas. So I'm going to hide the feet here. Probably going to hide uh, these orbs, these little craters here. And let's just kind of play around with this for a little while. I want to do a big brush here. Uh, we'll have something where uh, one of the perspectives could be that it's really looking up at the character. It's not, not my favorite, but we could try that first. So I'll kind of do a big mask. Uh, when I do these types of masks, it will almost certainly destroy the sculpt. Uh, I'm, I've accepted that already, and I know that I'm going to have to re-sculpt a lot of this. That's okay. So it's coming down. Let's even make it look down. Let's do... Let's do something where, like, maybe the leg... None of this is in symmetry, by the way. It's going to, like, bend. Somebody was saying a knee. I like the idea of it being on a knee as well. I feel like that's a kind of a comforting, you know, like when you when you're interacting with a child, often you like drop to a knee just to get to their level to speak to them, and if this is a big protector over like a civilization or something like that, uh, maybe that's how it would have to or feel like it needed to communicate with them. I do. 
custom paint most of my masks. You can try to use the, you know, the whatever it's called, the drag ability, and sometimes it will work. But these are going to be pretty rough, and they're really just to get the pose out, to understand what the pose is, to see if the pose is working. Uh, not necessarily to say this is going to be the final pose, unless maybe I get lucky and it turns into that. But I'm not expecting to nail it on this every single time. Is it better to sculpt to a pose or should you always pose after? That depends. I know some people who do it both ways. Most people that I know uh, will sculpt the model in symmetry and then they will pose it. Uh, and then they will re-sculpt anything that needs to be posed or needs to be redone, I guess is probably the right way to say it, after. I just need to go here. Uh, after you've done that. That way you're getting the benefits of symmetry. You know, you're getting the benefits of blocking out your proportions, you know, the, the sizes of, of your character, the sizes of your masses. Uh, it's just a lot easier. It's a lot better to do it that way uh, because you're actually getting the benefits of it rather than feeling, you know, like you're not in any way. This is pretty ugly right here, but Ooh. I'm going to use um, turn off symmetry. I like to use the line. There's actually a very uh, kind of around the uh, ZBrush interface. There's a line. So what I'll do is I'll actually use this line as a line for where the character will be bending. Now, typically, uh, there's also a twist in the body when you do this type of a pose, meaning uh, if I were to just, I'll just do it, I guess, because I need to know for myself. Um, maybe he's like going down and putting one hand down with that. That means that the weight of the character would be on this hip so that means that we'll move everything in a second well, I'm just going to rotate the whole character like this and then I'll come back in here try to capture this leg again which is going to be a pain but I'm going to do the best I can to kind of just re-rotate it uh, if you're doing posing, I super highly recommend you do what I just did, which was just get out of your chair and try to do the pose. There honestly isn't necessarily a better way to know what it feels like to do that pose, to try to get in the position of it. Um, it will really help you. And that means if we did that way, meaning we did... Let's hide these arms again. Uh, if the whole body twisted, I'll hide this, the whole body twisted that way down, the top has to go the other way. It's actually pretty hard to just like twist part of your hips or your torso and not make the other ones respond. There always needs to be an opposite to that. So we're going to do just a little bit of twisting in the upper body. And I also want the top to kind of come forward. And down. And we'll take this arm. Let's just isolate this arm. We'll bring the whole arm forward. Ooh. And then let's like... Uh, let's just move everything. See how that leg isn't really supporting his weight anymore. So we'll pull that out.
grab this one. This feels like he's like gonna grab somebody to like crush them. That's not really the intent that I want. I have to do a lot of re-sculpting on these hands, which is fine. Totally fine to have to do that. I'm just gonna try to lighten up the mask a little bit. I'm just painting it with Control and Alt. But again, this is a rough pose. It doesn't need to be perfect. Let's kind of just get the idea up there. And then we'll just kind of push the arm back. It's not going to line up perfectly. It's not going to be exactly what we want for this test. But again, this is just kind of a test to say which pose do we like more. And then with this arm, maybe we just, oh, you do big dad energy and you just kind of do the arm laying, it's gonna break this when I do this, but I wanna put the arm over bring it over. You like this workflow, how you can pose a character without rigging and messing with topology. Yeah, that's why I like doing it in ZBrush. Um, you know, there's other ways you can obviously do this, uh, but it's just so simple it's simple to ideate it's fast so I kind of like this one I don't necessarily need to um, get this all perfect for this one. I could always come back and fix things or re-sculpt things and that's probably what I would do. So I'm actually gonna save what I have right now as uh, one of the poses. So just gonna call it like pose A and I'll reload that in a second. So this is pose A. Pose A is what we have here. Um, I'm going to actually make sure it goes back. Let's see what happens. It's now taking all of those. It's going to repose them in the right size. So now this is back to the geometry. I'm going to hit all high. This is going to take a second because it's going to take all the subtools and put them at their most detailed version. And we'll see what this even looks like. There we go. So there's obviously some problems, but nothing like nothing model destroying, nothing something where I'm like, I can't fix this in a you know, little bit of time. Kind of come in and adjust some of these shapes or push some of these shapes around or overlap them with the existing shapes not a big deal a lot of people get weirded out or freaked out when they're doing a character like this or trying to pose a character and they always feel like you can't warp it like you can't move it but the body everything is pretty malleable it's not a robot right it's not hard pieces of something right so let's get these little characters here so we'll imagine that there's something here i probably would want the whole probably easier to do it this way just t-pose the whole thing again oh, i should hit all low before i do that but what I want to do is just kind of basically, uh, we'll do this piece, this piece, and this piece. Isolate it. And just spin it. I 
do that again. Am I planning to make more poses after with pose A, or am I going to start with this one? Uh, I'm planning to make more poses. So we'll do probably pose A, B, C, D, at least A, B, C, to get some options. And then now that I've got this one, I'm going to save this. So save as. Uh, it's still saving in my other directory, so let me change that. Pose A. Cool. Oh, I didn't make a new recording. Sorry, everybody. I was supposed to be recording this. So you're going to see that pop up in a second. Uh, I use this for the recap videos. All right, so here we go. Starting from the same one. No, I'm going to go back to uh, the previous version. So I'm going to go to this one. And say here is our character. So this is the one that we have, and then we have this pose here. I don't have the color on that anymore, which is kind of annoying. I should probably have fixed that, but that's okay. So we'll do it without color for now. This can have color. And these can have color. There we go. All right, so we did A. This is A. I'm pretty happy with this one. It kind of gets the idea across of what I was wanting. All right, we'll maybe have like some little huts or, or some sort of like a settlement or like it could be like built into like something, right? There could be like a world kind of around this. Okay, very Baymax feels. That was kind of the uh, one of the big inspirations or shape inspirations for sure. So let's do another one. Uh, T pose mesh. Oh, I should have hit all low. It's going to do it anyways, though. It's uh, it's thinking. A lot of music brush. Anyways, while well, it's deciding if it's going to do that or not, how's everybody doing? Anybody working on any cool projects out there? See anything interesting? Anything cool? See a lot of heat online for Boba Fett recently. That was interesting. Boba Fett 3. The, I won't give any spoilers, but a lot of people did not like that episode. Oh, it is really trying to think about all these pieces. There we go. All right, we need another pose. Anybody got some pose suggestions? Hello, Jay. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. So we already did this one. That's not the one. We already did this one. I think we need to do like a walking one. Or just like a very strong, proud protector one. Laying, laying on the ground. That's interesting. Maybe a little too casual for the character, though. All right, let's get into it. Like chi childing, like child posing? Let's see. Oh, my tablet has decided to only work on one screen. Hang on. There we go. I'm probably just going to do this one fast because it's just the one that I think is like kind of expected where you're just like the giant thing that they all let 
these these cultures are like aware of or worship. I don't think I needed to bring those little moon things in there. We could definitely do like a pondering orb one. I think somebody had talked about that. I like that idea. Really hard to say type poses. Yeah, that is true. It, it is hard to communicate actions and words. Man, dainty hand finger orb and the hand at the top of the human. Like kind of like a touching them kind of thing. It's like charades. We're all having to figure out what, what's being said. just like walking I guess sometimes I just do the poses to get them out of the way like I should probably do a walking pose I should probably explore one that's doing this idea you know not always because like they're the ones I want to do but like it almost sometimes feels like you need or should do So this is like a pretty basic walk pose. So I'll uh, do the projection on this one, not projection, but the transpose. We'll save this as option B. Maybe we'll do like a hero pose and then we'll do like the dainty pose. That's probably the four that we'll do today. Cool. This is saved. Great. Save as. Always wants to go into the transpose master directory, which I do not want it to do. All right, so we have pose B. Great. All right, now let's go load up the other one again. Uh, hit all low this time so it doesn't take as long. T-pose mesh. 
Alright. Yeah, before I undo that, let's see. I kept fighting that, so let's go back to the mesh. It's nothing's really gonna happen. I just don't want to bring this and this and the humans along. It'll only bring along whatever you show, so you don't have to do it like that every time. Uh, hero pose usually. It's like leading with your chest. So I'm just going to push the whole character, basically. Grab these arms. Probably like move them slightly backwards. Rotate them. Inside like this. Mm. I would probably like do something. This is going to be a really ugly way to do this, but it's fast. Just mash that all into a fist. Making one pose would take you hours. <laughs> uh, it's it's definitely something that takes a little time to get used to. Uh, I think the key is in these. None of these are necessarily like the final pose. And I don't try to pretend that they will be. So what I am basically doing is just saying like, I want to get the idea out. I want to try the idea. I want to get it out in a couple minutes. And this is great, you know, if you're working and you just want to, like, get approvals, get ideas, get movement, right, before anything really happens. Because it is important to see what you're going to see beforehand, so. Or to, you know, for an, uh, an art director to see what they're going to approve before they move forward. So do it as fast as you can. Do it in a way that doesn't necessarily... Um, take too much time. See what I can do with these arms. This is like if he was in, in a... <laughs> um. Yeah, if you're moving, if you feel like you're moving slow, sometimes it is just because you're not thinking about like the, you're thinking about exactly what you're saying. You're thinking about too much about the end goal, not about what you're trying to make, like the, the next step. Sometimes the, the process to get to the next step is really easy. It doesn't take as long as you think. Also, people get really worried about making every step along the way perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect along the way. The 
it's kind of just more of a T pose. Maybe we'll just do the do the down look again. Last time we did to the left, right? That one's to the left. I think this one's also to the left. This time it'll go to the right. Very pleased with themselves. Save that in the proper spot. This is pose C. We'll do one more. This was the orb one I think we had talked about. So, so far we have kind of a walking one. Well, we started with a different one. It's this one. we have our just straight up kind of sort of walking pose. We have our hero pose. Should put those lower, but what I'll do real quick is also just uh, I'll do it at the end. I'll copy them and put them in Photoshop, but uh, to kind of evaluate them all and look at them all. But I think we're getting there. Uh, we're going to do one more pose. Uh, we're going to play around the orb this time. Uh, maybe it could be holding it or looking at it or doing something. And um, yeah, let's try that. So one more. We're going to load back the old file that we started with. And we're going to do pose C. All right, this time we're gonna bring along everything. Yeah, we'll bring along everything except for you. You don't need to be here. Uh, all low. T-pose. All right, let's use like this one is our orb. Okay. And let's do, I kind of liked this kneeling pose. There's a way we could probably combine them. But I have an idea where we'll do, let's see, let's hide this. Hide this, hide this, hide this. And we'll just start doing this arm. Probably like what we saw before. Rotate this. I'm going to even rotate it up a little more.
trying to make kind of like a flattish platform here. Where the arm is actually going can be in front of the body a little bit. I think I probably could pull this elbow out. Okay, let's bring this here. move the legs around a little bit just so it's not as static of a pose because it'd be a pretty static pose I think let's get this we'll put it over here No, 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 do not do that. It's going to try to save all those at once. Whenever it does autosave, it tries to save every file in your scene. And that is not what I want to deal with right now. Kind of already did this pose with them. might be weird but I kind of like it being they're just walking up
It's definitely more like a storytelling pose. This is where I could probably combine the bent knee one as well. So like if we... How would I do that? I would save it. Okay. So I, I kind of like how this is. But I'm going to T-pose it. Uh, all high. And I'm going to save it. This is pose D. I'm actually going to take some stuff from other poses for this, though. So I will move some things around on this one, because I think, even though it's fine, I think that the kneeling part would be better uh, for this moment of this. So what I kind of want to do is take this, clone it, clone it, go back into here, and uh, under here I'm going to append, actually insert, this and under here I'm going to insert this set of arms oh, it's thinking about it I did twist that whole body though huh it's thinking about it All right, well, we're waiting for this to, uh, to do its thing. I guess I should say thank you to our sponsors, which is right here. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, Lenovo, for making this show happen. Uh, they make this show, Creature Corner, Art Jam, and all of our industry events happen. Uh, if you weren't able to check out last week, we did a really, really cool event with Mitchells versus the Machines. Got to talk to the director slash writer, Mike Rionda, uh, head of animation, producer, VFX supervisor, and head of story. They were all there, so that was a really great event. You can check it out on our YouTube, uh, so you know, definitely check that out if you're interested in that. Um, if you're not watching on our YouTube, you know, head over there. It's also on our Twitch as well. You can check that out too. That's a good one. I don't know why this is taking so long. I think it's because of the meshes that I maybe I merged in was so high. Once we get all of this to come back, uh, I'm going to take screenshots of this. I'm going to bring it into Photoshop, and then we'll do some quick sketches as far as what the environment could be, and that'll help us for next week when we'll be making our environment or working on the composition, I guess, as well. Hmm. Should we kill it? I think we have to. We'll bring it in anyways. We'll do it as a quick test. Maybe we can bring that in in uh, Photoshop. Starting on my other monitor. There we go. So we'll get all these in here and then we'll bring it in. I'm going to just try to do this quick. We're basically going to make a pose E, a combination pose, which is going to be a combo of this one and this one. So I'm going to go to both of these. Uh, I'm going to go to all low on both of them. That should make it a little bit easier to work. 
Do I watch movies or anime or play games for inspiration? Yeah, I do all the above. I don't watch mo much anime, though. Just never really got into it. this and I'm going to basically try a little combo. This one I'll have to spend a lot more time. I'll probably have to repose the whole thing to make it work, but I could see the potential in it. More open. Obviously the head isn't really in the right place. This is probably going to be it for pose E. So we'll go all high. This is probably going to be pretty messed up in the neck. Get all these screenshots out in just a second as soon as I save this. Save as, and this is pose E. And let's 
that's all high. All right, so we're going to do some quick screenshots. I'm going to take my document. I'm going to make the rate zero. That makes it exactly one color, so there's no gradient. If you really need to or you really want, you can change the background here to be like something that you can easily color pick. I don't really like you doing that, but you can. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Photoshop. You can do renders of these if you'd like. Like I could sit here and do, uh, you know, nicer renders where the there will be shadows or something like that, and that's not a bad idea. You don't have to either. All right, let's get these all in here. Load. So we have E. We have A. I need to load D, which is the basically the standing version of this. 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 and C. Esteban, you have a question about submitting for Nomen's Foundation course. When submitting for an initial art review, at what level of completion should the art be? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't actually know that offhand, so I wouldn't be afraid to, to submit it with whatever you have. They are usually very open to just um, seeing where you're at. So I would personally just submit anyways. Don't worry about level of completion. They'll work with you on that. should be in the same coloring now I guess the moons are not I don't know if they're moons or not I'm just calling them moons all right do a quick render see what that looks like Definitely changes the way these spheres look because I'm using surface noise on them. Look what it changes them into. Ooh. I'm just going to do screenshots. All right. one actually looks better from an up angle as well. sort of that standing version.
All right, everybody, let's get these all sorted out. We'll kind of figure out which one we like the most. Just saving the file, getting this all set up. All right, let's see. Let me order them in what we had. I think this was a. Uh, I think this was B, E, C, D, E. So we have our A, B, C, uh, D, and E. All right, Chad, I need some help on some quite on some opinions. On what we like the most, I will say so far for me, I think I kind of like um, A. This one I like. I like the idea of this one. I like kind of the idea of what's kind of going on in here of this one. I think... B works, but I think it's too simple. And uh, between, if, like, if I'm just looking at the standing poses, I think that probably uh, B and C, I would prefer C. This one's just kind of like the big walking giant. And I like it, but I'm not sure it's really the, the character that I want to go with. Any opinions from the chat? I'm not sure I like D the more that I think about it. You like D? Yeah, the legs are simple right now. I like D, but it's, I think it's almost too simple. I think I combined too many things in this. Like, wonder like if I just even turned the head down on this one. If that would be better. You like A the most, Esteban? This is feel, feels like a very standard design shot. Like this is what you would do. This is like it in the wild. I think A's up there, so let's give a little star. That star will do a... A little circle. Yeah, E shows up the same relationship. I think this is a no. This might work for a single design shot, but I don't really want to spend the time to do a separate design shot. I think 
B or D does this better. And I think it's really between the kneeling poses of this idea. Am I doing this little character where there's like a, a globe kind of thing? Well, I could probably could do that either way. So let's say we take this. Pop it in here. Even that feels weird, though. The positioning of it feels odd. Oh, had a quick glitch. There we go. <laughs> the stream's almost over. For some reason, the stream is like five minutes away from being over. It decide, seems to decide that it is time to glitch. This is the best of that little figure. Stick man. This was that. There's a game that looked like this. Sword and sorcery. Something like that. Star Citizen looks like this. <laughs> Does it? That's interesting. I guess I... I okay. I think it's A. I think I'm going with A. figure out something with the lighting in this but I think that this is just generally like the kind of the kind of composition that I'm thinking um, with the pose I think it's just more much more clear I think the pose is more relatable uh, I think that a has a better overall vibe I like the idea of this, you know, of this one. And I think it would be cool in a different context. Like I think if I was doing, you know, a single shot or a series of shots that was more like this, then I think that could be cool.
or even this is A. This is E. Even E could have that, but it's not quite the same. Yeah, that's why I like the A one, the composition, Esteban, like you're saying, when adults kneel down to talk to children, it demonstrates a certain amount of caring for them, the same with the caregiver and the human is in the A, compassion. AJ, it's so cool when you can basically hear a still image moving, the rushing wind and the crumbling rocks in this. Thank you. When you design something original, do you do a 2D thumbnail sketch or do you use ZBrush exclusively? Almost exclusively we use ZBrush on this. Uh, I did do a very fast uh, sketch in Photoshop, which was uh, frankly just to, to uh, explore ideas. Uh, they were looked like this. So this was uh, some references that I had and then obviously some references and then realistically it was like I wanted something kind of in this shape. Uh, maybe I drew these little orbs in here and so this was like the general idea. And then if you want to watch the making of this, by the way, you can, there's this is a series so you can watch the whole making of. Uh, on You're on YouTube now so go to our channel and you'll see uh, the, the archetype series and you'll see a, a whole series of these. Yeah, this is what it, my initial sketch was. So you can kind of see where we're getting to with that, like this and this. It's kind of the same. I do like this one. This might be like a, maybe after I get the first one done, try to import the model, put it in there real quick and see if I can get another pose. But uh, yeah, I think that this is where we're at. We are basically at time today. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining the stream, everybody who's been watching. I uh, hope you're all enjoying the Archetype series. This is our second character of 12, so we have a lot of characters to do. Each character is going to take about four to five weeks, depending on what they are, what they're doing. Uh, this one is a bit more of a larger size character, so we'll be exploring different scale. And then my goal for next week is to be in Unreal Engine 5, uh, building the environment for this character and basically setting up the lighting, the composition, and the environment. So if you want to see that, like, follow, subscribe, and I'll be doing that uh, in the next stream. That will be from next Tuesday from 10 a.m. to noon Pacific time on this channel, wherever you're watching. We also have a ton of another amazing um, content. So we have a stream tonight from uh, 8 to 10 Pacific called Creature Corner uh, with Jared Krzyzewski. We have a stream tomorrow from 4 to 6 p.m. with called Art Jam, where I'll be sculpting human heads. And then we have a new stream coming up on Friday called Voice in the Hollow, where uh, Tran, Ma, and Miguel Ortega will be creating a short film in Unreal 5, purely in Unreal 5, um, for basically the next six months. And you can watch their production diary and watch that sh short happen from nothing to final completion. So check all that stuff out. Uh, and thank you all very much. Um, appreciate you all being here as always. And uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.